the 13th of December, the innkeeper. Our scripture today carries on where we left off yesterday in Luke chapter 2 verses 6 through 7. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She, Mary, gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Now, again, the thing I'm finding that as we look at the story of the nativity, all the lovely, cosy environments that we, that we kind of associate with the nativity are just fabrications. We looked yesterday that Mary and Joseph have had this possibly nine day ordeal, traveling 90 miles, avoiding bandits, um, just having bread and water. Um, what I forgot to say is on this journey when they went through woods, when I was talking about it yesterday, there's lions, there's bears, there is wild boars. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And they get there and then they're ready. They could do with a night in a Premier Inn, a three-star hotel, nice and comfortable, just relax, nothing fancy, but just comfortable. And they get there, there's no space in the Premier Inn. In fact, there's no space in anywhere. There's not even space in a youth hostel kind of accommodation. And let's remember, it gets freezing. It's freezing at night. There could be snow on the ground as they arrive. And it's just, you could only imagine what Mary and Joseph, particularly Joseph is going through, who is the provider and protector of Mary and his soon to be born son, Jesus. They knock on every door. We desperately need somewhere, they say. But you can imagine it from the, the perspective of the, you know, the innkeepers, the hotel owners, uh, well, there wasn't hotels, but let's just call them innkeepers anyway. So the innkeepers, and they, they have a knock on the door, and they're already full to the rafters. But one innkeeper sees the desperate need and says, maybe says to his wife, maybe he's got a soft touch. Love, can we, we've got to find her a space. They're going to freeze to death. She's pregnant. I know that project I was working on in the, in the stable, look, if I move that to a side, we can just squeeze her in by the cattle. And then the, 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 the cows and the, the, the calves and whatever other animals are in there, the chickens, they'll at least give a bit of warmth and they'll survive it, make it through the night. And so his wife says, go on then, whatever. I'm not having anything to do with it. And so the innkeeper sorts them out with a space to stay. And I'd like to think, because we don't hear anything more about the innkeeper, but like when the Ten Commandments, the Ark of the Covenant, was stored in, I can't even remember where it was now, but was stored in the, the house of, um, you know, a godly man in the Old Testament. God blessed that house. And surely that innkeeper must have been the most prosperous innkeeper in the history of the world. I mean, he let Jesus be born in his stable. Just imagine the blessings that must have been. I'd like to think that he never had another bed empty in his inn for the rest of his life because the favour of God just poured over this innkeeper and his household. So Jesus is born in the stable thanks to the, 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 the gentle generous heart of the innkeeper and that's what I'd like to focus on today is the heart your heart there's going to be times when we see a need we see a need for us to care for someone maybe that's someone who's homeless on the street maybe that's someone is someone who's in need going through emotional struggle or um, many other needs, you know, financial need, um, spiritual need. And like the rest of the innkeepers, it would be so easy for us to just turn our heads, turn a blind eye, blind eye and say, I've got enough on. 
but God speaks to us and he, he raises something in us where our hearts are stirred and we need to act like that innkeeper. And when we act like that innkeeper, God will use us in amazing ways. Maybe we never see the fruit of that on this side of heaven in terms of us doing that kind act or sharing the gospel with that person. But maybe, and sometimes we do, we see the fruit. We see the joy in someone's face as we love them, as we hug them. We see the hearts open and they invite Christ into their life. There will be fruit, whether we see it now or in eternity. And so we need to make sure that we don't miss those opportunities that God gives us. And we need to be like the generous, kind innkeeper who opens our lives, our hearts, even our homes to those in need. Because imagine if he didn't. Imagine the scenario of Mary giving birth on the street in the icy cold. It's unimaginable. God would have brought something else, someone else to look after them, but that innkeeper would have missed the blessings that God would have bestowed upon them for their generosity. Obviously, I'm reading into the text here. There is no account of what happened to the innkeeper afterwards, but I know God blesses and rewards those who listen to him. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for the innkeeper. We thank you so much to, as to how you moved and stirred his heart and he listened and he had compassion and generosity to open his home. God, we pray that we would also have that openness and re receptivity to your gentle whisper that we would make our lives open to those that you bring upon our path, that we may share the love of Jesus with everyone you bring forward to us. We pray that we would be faithful stewards of the opportunities you bring us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.